a rise in operating cash flow, three, a rise in return on assets, four, a rise in working capital, five, a rise in gross margin, six, operating cash flow is greater than the company's net income, seven, its ratio of long-term debt to assets has fallen, eight, its growth rate of sale exceeds that of asset acquisition, and nine, during the one-year window, the company has not diluted the value of the stock by issuing more new shares to the public than it bought back. Now, let's imagine in 1976, you decided to take $1,000 out of the bank. With this money, you began investing in stocks that achieved an 8 caliber or greater F score, meaning the companies you chose fulfilled at least eight of these financial milestones. Now, what happened next, what independent sources have determined, is something you are really going to want to pay attention to. For the next 20 years, that single $1,000 stake would have grown, on average, 23% a year. By 1996, it would have transformed into $77,000. And as amazing as that two-decade accomplishment was, the F-score is now even more accurate and lucrative. Over the last 10 years, it has averaged 26.7% annual return. So a $1,000 stake over a decade ago would have grown into more than $10,660 today. Over the last five years, this performance is even better. It's returned, on average, 33.9% a year. So, if you started playing F-score stocks with $1,000 then, today it would be worth more than $18,527. In fact, go back to 2008 for a second. This F-score would have single-handedly saved your portfolio from the recession. In 2008, the stock market experienced a 43% drop that was absolutely terrifying to most investors. Yet, F-score stocks rose 32.6% on average. With that kind of year-in and year-out market-beating performance, it's entirely logical to wonder, why on earth isn't everybody using this? Pure hubris is the answer. Wall Street's top bankers and brokers refuse to believe that an 